Last season, we were just a few wins away from winning the Bundesliga. And we're unfortunately unable to win DFB Pokal for the second time in two seasons. So now what can Donato Ronchi do? Can he continue with Antwerp Frankfurt? Improving the team? Getting more better players in? Getting rid of the ones that are the dead world? And getting into a really good Bundesliga challenge inside? Well, let's see what happens in Season 7 of the High Five Journey Map. And we're actually back a bit before the end of the September or the summer window. The deadline day for that. Which you can be able to tell why if you know how these sorts of series go. Out on my channel at least. Anyway, I'll just quickly show you what's happened with Antwerp Frankfurt in summer window so far. Uh, first off, uh, I'll just tell you that we're now four-star uh, manager, uh, reputation-wise. So we've really improved from what three-star when we were with Salta Vigo to three and a half-star after winning the DFB Pokal last year to now four-star after getting runners-up in the DFB Pokal and getting Champions League football again. But we'll go and look at the transfers that have happened so far this season. So first off, we sold Elias Skiri. Uh, Skiri. I don't know how. I know. I know how you pronounce it. I just can't say it. Skiri. Um, he was quite good for us last season, but I thought we could get a better player in, or play a younger player. And he was digressing in his potential, his current ability, I should say, at his age. So we just, you know, cashed in on him while we could. And Chaibi was sold to Wolves as Wolves in his agreement for his loan offer from last season. We also learned that Alexander Staff, who's a player that could get good eventually if he gets game time, as well as loading out uh, Vadeka, who is a player just not in my first team plans. And then we've brought in one player, Dant Ramage. Comes in as our backup goalkeeper for £6 million from Leipzig. Um, we needed a better backup goalkeeper and so this guy was that. Um, we're also doing some more transfers. Red going for this guy but he's gone uh, and joining a different team. Killing Sadella, he's joining Man City. So yeah, we missed out on him obviously. Adam Tanzan, or Tanzman, uh, is could be coming into the side as Adi Sadabak. This guy, Christoph Van Pry, uh, we'll try to get in him, in him, get try to get him in as well. But Liverpool uh, beating us to him. We're getting this guy in, Daddy Muller, um, as uh, another midfielder option or DM option. And then we just rejected this offer. Liverpool wanted him for this offer, and yeah, Union Berlin rejected it. So. In terms of the people that could be sold, uh, Tarek Bachman, or Buckman I should say, um, he could be going to Hamburg. Maximilian Hennig could be sold to Real Sociedad for just about £10 million. Pounds. Learning out Charlie Crew so he can get game time and actually get to that three star potentiality because I don't see him have a place in our team for this season. And Abel Ruiz, we've actually accepted a £108 million offer um, from Al Itihad. It's £97 million all up front. Well, not £97 million all up front. Um, it's £51 million up front. Next for £40 million over the course of three seasons. And if he plays one game, it's um, what another £17 million or something like that to get to £108 million. And I think that is such a over the price offer for him. Uh, he was unhappy because he wasn't being played. He wanted to join them, and eventually they just came in with a mega offer, and we just yeah comes in for twenty. Came in for twenty two point five million. We sell for hopefully a hundred million eventually. Wasn't that he's just been capped by Spain? Was that recently? No, that was in real life when we were sporting Brag. So yeah, he's not been picked for Spain since then. I did not not even know this guy even played for Spain, so yeah, that's kind of me not realising that, but yeah. Anyway, Inter have approached us, and I am going to accept the offer. Inter, if we could look at their side, 
the one um, so we are in the first season the one in the second season and the one in the fourth season uh, in the third season Juventus won it in the second in the fifth and sixth season Milan have overtaken them um, the manager at all that time was Inzaghi um, who has been sacked and then it's been Roberto De Zerbi who has ended up going to Real Madrid and yeah it's a perfect opportunity to win trophies at Inter Milan now they're not as good as Milan uh, AC Milan I should say but Inter Milan are second best and yeah I'm gonna take them up on their offer and join them as their new manager well here we are with Internationale Milano and it's just said Milan but it's Milano uh, Milano, Milano, Milano. We've left Antrak Frankfurt to join Inter. Uh, apparently the favourite was Nika Kovac, but we've got it, so that's good for him. Also not good for him. We've got a director of football in. He's literally brilliant, so that's good to see. And yeah, we've won three Champions Leagues, 23 Serie A's. Uh, only problem is it's actually 22, but it says 23 because we won two in 2024 because with the updated database I had for the new season, it was already saying that into one 2024, and then we played the 23-24 season and then won it again. So, just goes to show how good the side they had back then. Well, in 2023-24 and 24-25. Um, we've also won a Club World Cup, we've won three Europa Leagues, um, 11 Coppa Italias, two in, in, two in continent, Intercontinental Champions Clubs Cup. Don't know what that is, and we've also won 12 EA Sports FC Super Cup. So we played at San Siro, obviously, and found it in 1908. First rivals are Juventus, I would also probably add Milan into that as well, AC Milan. And yeah, uh, top owner is Latiro Martinez, key player is Latiro Martinez, so he's our best player by far. And uh, the expectations is like to sign. Italian players, players, uh, develop players on clues in the club's youth system, play possession, play attacking, play high tempo. Um, challenge for the Coppa Italia, qualify for the Champions League. That's not, I don't expect more for them, but okay. And which that stage is the FIFA Club World Cup. And then eventually to win the Serie A. Um, which I give us two or three seasons, I think we can do. If we go to the best players, Latoura Martinez is our best player still with the club at 31 years of age. Uh, he's a striker, obviously. Diomande is with us. Um, centre back DM, Jave Guerrero, DM midfielder. Mudrick is with Inter. And he is turned into a fantastic player. I wonder how much they spy. Uh, I wonder how much they got rid of. Uh, Chelsea got rid of him for. Okay, that is a travesty. You pay 73 million of them. Well, Chelsea pay 73 million for him. Sure, he's not a first team regular, but he's playing often. And he's not doing too badly in one of the seasons or two of the seasons. And then we play 1.8 million on loan and then get him on 10.25 the next year. That is a bad deal by Chelsea. It really is. And now he's worth 150 to 165 million. <laughs> Yeah, bad deal by Chelsea there. Bastoni still with the club, and Marco, who's our left back. Barella, who's a DM midfielder. Valentin Carboni, who's an AMC. Federico Chiesa still with the club, or has joined the club. I don't think he's with them in real life, is he? No, of course, he's with Liverpool nowadays. The update database, at least, he is. So, yeah, a um, good amount of players. In terms of people that are youngsters who look the best in terms of potential wise, we've got this guy Paolo Bonatta who's a DM and right back. Uh, we've also got Michael Petrini who's a striker. Uh, Jacopo Sesti who's a DM and centre back. I've also got Manzi who's left winger, right winger, and uh, Mortolero who is an MC. So a few good younger players, especially Bernardo, but whether he'll reach that potential ability um, with them only being 21 and not really getting or assuming much game time, 
So he's played 12 for Italy already. Um, past three seasons, he's been on the fringes, but his best season has been with Cagliari. Might be a low move for him, I don't know. So yeah, we've joined Inter Milan. So yeah, we were a bit busy in the transfer window. We brought in 131 million, and so 6 million one pounds went out. But just quickly look at when we joined. We've joined on the 12th of the 7th. So some of these players were already signed and already gone. So Alexander Kamakelson was sold in this window, but I uh, wasn't to do with me. Neither were some of these players, including Adam and Luckman, being sold. Uh, Fabio Covello, uh, Fruitcall. It's so some players went. Um, some players did join, including Noah Oberbreck who is our backup goalkeeper, or I would say emergency backup. Um, Matthew Dumoro, who is a player that has nowhere near good enough, comes in from Padova. But let's look at the signings, the signings we made. So Nicola Angelini comes in as our right back. We needed a better right back. I looked at him of his potential ability and so signed him. Comes in from Napoli, where he's played a few times these past few seasons. We've signed him for £25 million, all up from... Oh well, a few up front, a few over the course of a few years. I think he'll turn out to be brilliant. Now I tried to get in an like, old guy from Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, what was his name? I forgot his name. Ventrelli. But the one in 70 to 83 million, which is worth it. I do think he's worth it. But uh, I could get cheaper options. I could get just as good. And so that's why we went for Angelini. Another player that joined was Glyn Price. I noticed he was quite cheap on uh, from Man City. That season he had a good loan with Bristol City. Um, I don't know whether to put him on a loan list or not. I decided against it as, a, as a, he'll be our backup striker. If he doesn't play, I might try and look to loan him out. But he's a first non-EU player. But I think he stands as okay because he's an under-22, under-21 player. So... It, I don't think it counts for that, and I can sign another non-EU player from the British Isles, basically. But yeah, he's played nine times in the way, also scored two goals, and he's their striker, left winger and right winger. Also played makeshift on the um, ML, ML, midfield left. Uh, but yeah, a good signing to have. Another player to join was Celso Nebrega, who comes in Marco, who is a brilliant player. No, like, get me, don't get me wrong, he's an amazing player and he will be a backup. A uh, brilliant option to have on the bench, but I just want to focus on the youth. This save this series because I never focus on the youth and I want to focus on the youth. And so, Salso Nabrega has joined us. Left back, um, squad player, but it'll be a regular start because I've locked him in. I've locked him in alongside Angelini because he was not going to be playing either. And yeah, he's a good player to have. Bit overpriced, so three and a half million pounds from Napoli. Um, who signed him literally season prior for two hundred two million pounds from Nacional de Madeira in Portugal. So he also had a loan spell at Swansea, so yeah. Um, but I think he'll be a decent player. And finally, this was direct football, this wasn't even me. He just put in an offer for Romeo, uh, Romeo Lavia. Uh, I thought I was gonna, I was gonna reject it to be fair, the bid. But I thought seventy million for a player of his quality. I think he's worth it. I could have gone. I could be honest. I could have stopped, stopped with that transfer and actually gone in for some of the old players of Eintracht Frankfurt. And I thought no, we'll just let what Eintracht Football was doing. Let him do what he's doing. And so yeah, he signed Romeo Lavia. And a bit pricey on the Rangers, but I think he's going to be a, a brilliant, brilliant player for us. In terms of the people that we did sell, we saw Yannick Pandar, who was just never in my first in plans. Um, so he's gone to Monza. I uh, will own that. Some people like um, some people. Basically, this guy could have been in the first team, maybe Camilo Tundo. Um, he's been loaned out to Sampdoria. We also learned out Francisco Pio Esposito to Ren. Uh, I thought I'm also have Glyn Price play as the backup striker, so 
Yeah, he's been loaned out. He's also been listed. I don't think he has a place for us in our team. Producer Alberti is another player that could have been in the first team. He's been loaned out. Empoli. Then we sold Arakovic. Uh, I was not looking to sell him. But 37.5 million rather than 48, 48 million if he plays like one game or something like that. Or No, it's not that. Is it played 20 games or 10 games or played one international? It's something like that. But it's £48 million. It was signed for £6.25 million from Zenit. I think that's a good offer. And so, yeah, he's gone to Arsenal. Another player that could have got into the first team was Moretto. He's been loaned out. And uh, to be honest, he wouldn't have got into the first team because we don't play anywhere, any place in his positions he can play. So we play right backs and DMs. And he can play AMC to be fair, which we do play with, but yeah, that was why he was loading down that, I remember. We also sold Pablo Quanat um, to Leipzig. He's probably the backup, he's probably the replacement for that guy we signed in Wild Track Frankfurt, but he's gone to Leipzig as their backup for £750,000. And this guy, Aaron Buru, who looks like he could get good, he was loaned out to Elevez. We also loaned out a few more players to our affiliates, including one to Cagliari, Zapatore, who I don't know why he's one to uh, Cagliari because they're way too good for him. Uh, he's, they're way, yeah, they're way too good for him. I said it right, Matthew. And finally, on the transfer deadline, though, we saw this guy, Gabriel Mishui. Um He could have been in the first team plans, but I decided to sell him, and yeah, 4.7 million uh, after he. He's at what? He's only played 11, not 11, 13. He's played 16 times over the course of four seasons with the club. It's a major loss of money, but it just wasn't him. It's just not good enough. So, yep, yeah, sold him. And he has gone over to Borussia Mönchengladbach to become a squad player where with us. He was a Finnish player. And that is a transfer. So, 131 million pounds in. Basically, with four players, <laughs> that's a lot of money, uh, and 76 million pounds out with a few players being sold. Uh, it would have been a lot less on the money if you hadn't been for the Romeo Lavia signing, but I think it was a good price to have him in. Uh, how much is he worth now? Let's see, he's now worth 150 to about 180, so yeah, good offer there. And we started off quite well, so we've had the FIFA Club World Cup. Um, which will go to stages. So it looks like Antwerp Frankfurt. I think we played our first game with Antwerp Frankfurt. We won it like seven 0 or something against International. Um, but we beat. They have of course qualified. We qualified against PSG and Al Hilal in Junior. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't. I don't. I definitely doubt it, that. Um, then Antwerp Frankfurt beat Boca seven one. I think that was also me. Uh, Inter meanwhile beat Fluminense. And then this was me when I joined. Uh, we then beat Inter 5 1. At least I think it was when we joined. No, we were still manager of Antwerp Frankfurt then. And yeah, we're still, we weren't, we're still manager of Antwerp Frankfurt then. Uh, and then Inter lost 6 2 to Man City. And Man City won the whole tie against Tottenham. So Man City are the best team in the world, according to the FIFA Club World Cup. We were did well in our entire uh, pre-season and three opening games of the season we beat Napoli 3-2, we beat Florentina 3-1 and we beat Lazio 3-0. So three very tough teams, tooth, I mean tough. Uh, so yeah, three very tough teams and we will come away with nine points out of them. Uh, the only team to be better than all of it is Milan who have scored two more goals than us. Well, one more goal than us I would assume. No, we've just considered them all. Uh, and Juventus have played an extra game and that won that one. So it looks like it's going to be Milan, Juventus and us who are going to be fighting for who wins Serie A. Now we've also been put into the Champions League because of uh, Inter's position last year. If we go to the league phase, I think uh, if, I, if watching a YouTuber say this and me believing him, uh, which I assume is right because it's all like that, is... The positions you have in this table are the positions uh, in terms of first place, the best team expected to win the UEFA Champions League is Real Madrid. We're expected to finish seventh, or well, we're expected to be the seventh best team in the Champions League. 
We'll go to Eintracht Frankfurt there. All the way down 28th. So they're expecting to not even qualify for the uh, playoffs. Uh, we expect to finish second semi final of the Gobra Italia. We've got a match against no one currently. We've got a match in the next round. Yeah, we've got a match against either Hellas, Verona, or Sampdoria. And the expectations for the Super Cup is just to reach the final, where we've got a semi final against Napoli in the first round. So can we do it? Well, let's skip ahead to the end of December. See where we are. Halfway through our first season with Inter. So we are on the 25th of December. It's Christmas Day. We're calling second. Three points off Milan. In terms of the Champions League, we're in the 11th place. We're in the third round against Sampdoria. And we've still got the Super Cup of Italia to face. In terms of the competitions, um, lost to Real Madrid to be expected to draw against Porto. I thought we could do a bit better against them. Genoa, we could have beat them. Real Dena, we should have beat them. Liverpool, to be expected. Roma, I would at least want to draw. And Juventus, I think we did well to get a draw, even if it was at home. So yeah, it's been going expected. Uh, Milan have been something else though. They've only lost to Roma. So we lost to Roma, they lost to Roma 3-1. Both of us 3-1. They've also done with Fuentina. So, one loss for us, which was against Genoa, has cost us being top of the league so far. Yeah, we need to improve a tiny bit. I don't think we need to change the tactic, which I didn't change the tactics this one. Uh, 4 2 3 1. It's got a pressing forward on attack, a shadow strike on its attack, a wing on support, inside forward on attack, scored over Lanti on attack, DM on defend, two wing backs on support. To ball playing defenders on defence, the sweeper keeper on attack, it's custom gig and press. As you can see, we have locked in Angelino and Nebrega. In terms of dynamics, Marcus Torum, uh, Thoram Torum, uh, he wants to because he's not playing enough, he's only played three times. I'll look to sell him maybe. Carlos Augusto is also unhappy over wanting to go out on loan for game time. I might put him on the loan list to be honest. Fratesi wants to leave. Uh, wants to just agree playing time. We've put him on the transfer list, so yeah, hopefully he will be sold in January. And Thiago Santos is just not good enough. He is unhappy over wanting to start more games. So a bit of a few players are unhappy. Some of them have people agreeing with them. Some of them have people disagreeing with them. Um, but yeah, we have to decide who we put on the transfer list, who we put on the sales, who we put on the loan list, and all that stuff um, for January. Otherwise, the dread football will just load. I've got it so dread football loans out players if they're on the trans in the on the loan list, and sells players if they're on the transfer list for the value or for the asking price but yeah we will now skip ahead to the end of the season hopefully we've won something so first look at what transfers we did so it looks like a few people were loaned out uh rivera who could have been in the first team he was loaned out Beleni, he was not in the first team Campagna was not in the first team conservo was not in the, loan, in the first team so people that were on the loan list have been loaned out uh, no one was sold though uh, we did sign some players in, including Pau Kabasi, who I've noticed is joining us permanently. 23 year old, 2.5 star, corner ability, 3.5 star potential ability from Barcelona. 1.5 million uh, loan fee or £750,000 loan fee. He's only played five times. He's joining us permanently for 19 million. <laughs> oh god. Um, hopefully, that's not an end of the world thing for us. Uh, Mikkel Hilliard has joined us, who's youngster that could get good. So there's Ektar, another youngster that could get good. Leonhan Legrand, another youngster that could get good. And Mark Chappell, another youngster that could get good. Uh, two from Bayern, second side, one from PSG, one from Aston Villa. In terms of where we finished in the league, though, let's quickly look at what we have on the, trans on the results. So yeah, after the Juventus game, it just went down here. We lost to Milan. Lost to Napi in Super Copa uh, semi final. Draw Sassuolo. Draw Sassuolo. I don't think we've won the league. As you can see there, we haven't. Um, so I'm done. We did win in the Copa Italia. Then we drew with Napoli. And then it turned around a bit in the Champions League in Serie A. Before getting a 4 4 draw with Torino. And then just went down again. Got better again after a win against Udinese. 
Uh, we were knocked out in the knockout playoff round against Juventus by the looks of it. 4-3 on aggregate there. And since then we went on a brilliant run of form where we only lost to Atalanta. But it still was... Oh my god, it still wasn't enough. We were a point off. That draw against Torino, if we hadn't conceded four goals and only conceded two, we would have won. And if that had been the case, we would have got 88 points and beaten that Milan, I mean. And won the Serie A. In the end, Milan won it for the third time in a row. And yeah, uh, this point, who's the manager of Milan? Paolo Finesca, who I think starts as the manager of Milan in real life. As I think he does. He, but yeah, he's been amazing facing Milan. He's won them, what, three Serie A titles. Yeah, he's won them three Serie A titles and the EA Sports FC Super Cup. So he's not, he's not done too badly compared to us, um, who only wanted to do a few Paco. Uh, in terms of all the results, of course, we're, like I said, we were knocked out in the lock of play round. 4-3 on aggregate to Juve. Coppa Italia were knocked out in the quarter-final to Cremonese. Cremonese is sure they're a Serie A, but we should be beating them there. Uh, Esports Supercup were, of course, knocked out in the semi-final to Napoli. In terms of the Coppa Italia, in the end, it was actually Cremonese. Cremonese? Criminese beating Parma and then getting to the final before they lost 1 0 to Atalanta. Uh, so that was a win. That could have been a win for us in that tournament if we hadn't fallen to Criminese. Um, so we've got. Um, yeah, Juve won it. Fashion Napoli in the final. So that would have been a tough tie if we had got to the final of that. In the end, we've won nothing. Uh, in terms of our rating, we're still a four star manager. Um, I've actually made a manager quite old, he's now 54 in season, what, 7. If we quickly uh, look at our clubs, Salta Vigo, uh, how have you been doing? Still not top half. <laughs> same old, same old. Uh, Eduardo Navarez is now their best player. Um, star player though, he was unhappy because he wants to move to the squad. With a player and uh, team with a squad, stronger squad. I'm glad we signed him because they could get a massive profit for him. They really could. I don't want to see him go because he seems quite a good player. Uh, if we go to the guy who replaced us, Luis Miguel Caron was sacked. And uh, he's actually already been manager of Las Palmas, got sacked as well. And uh, Yavi Garcia replaced us, who was. Lay went from Leche, uh, Leche to Celta. If we look at Eintracht Frankfurt though, Sandro Wagner took over us I think. Yes, yeah, Sandro Wagner took over from us. Who was manager of Augsburg and St. Pauli and Verd Bremen and Bayer Leverkusen. Or assistant manager by Bayer Leverkusen. He has joined us, Bundesliga. They finished second miles, and I mean miles off by me in it. So, Stuttgart who won the league last time were finished sixth. That's their manager, but it's like no. I think Matthias Giselle was the one who won it and he's not been sacked. So kind of shows how overperforming how what overperforming they did in that season where we narrowly missed out. And did they win anything else? Uh, no, they haven't won another Pokal. Got to the round 16 in the Champions League, that's not bad. They're not in third round to Bayern. I bet Bayern did the double, didn't they? Yeah, they did the double. <laughs> <laughs> they were knocked out in the knockoff playoff round for, by Lenzo, Lonzo. If we go to the best players and average ratings and all that laugh, Toro Martinez were just behind a Rafael Leo. Uh, Mudrick did brilliantly. Martinez was massive ahead of all the other goal scorers, over 16 more than Piccoli in second. Uh, Mudrick got the same sisters, Benneker, Benneker, Asmil Benneker, Benneker. Clean sheets were to Aaron Ramsdale, I forgot to say he's at the club along with Dean Henderson. Play of the match awards um, was joined uh, first uh, with Lilia and Vlahovic with Martinez. And if we go to team overview, we've got the most goals, we've got fewer shots against, nowhere near possession, we've got eight on dribbles made, third or joint second on conceded. Clean sheets were top. Um, we're top on shots for, and of course seconds for points for game, but that's because we finished second. Um, but yeah, not bad, not bad at all. If we go into the best players, I, uh, I'm, I'm still played the most, and it was Lotiro, Lotoro, Martinez, 
Angelina played 49 games in the end and Brig played 49 games as well and they're both up to two and a half star and Brig has gone down his potential I think uh, well Angelino stay, stayed the same has he got a cap for Italy or was it all been to that uh, guy we had at Ventuelli at, we have had at Feintracht Frankfurt I would assume it's to the Ventuelli at Antwerp Frankfurt uh, considering that did Mrega get a cap for Portugal? Yeah, he's got one cap for Portugal. That's not bad. In terms of goals, in terms of the goals in the entire se- say uh, entire season, I mean, um, Latore Martin has got 49 52 appearances. Not bad one bit. Mudrick got 20 goals. Uh, Alberto was on the line, got an amazing goal cap tally for 16. Uh, he was with Empoli. Carboni did well at 13 goals. Guerra got did well at 12, Isaacson did well at 10, uh, Keza did well at 8, I would say, though he was mostly an assist guy. Esposito only got 6, it kind of shows that we're glad we loaned him out. And Enzo Mollet, uh, Miller, who used to have saved miss out on the French squad, only got 6, though he only played 33 games off the bench and only 3 out of 11 had started. In terms of assists, Mudrick got 17, Keyes got 16, Carboni got 13, Isaacson got 11, Guerra got 9, Barella got 9, Martinez got 8, Angelini got 6, that's not bad for a young player, and Abrego got 6, not bad for a young player either, and Enzo Monarch got 5. In terms of Adrian, Lothar Martinez, 3 expected to be top, uh, with one of the highest Adrians I've had in recent years. Um, games, what well, recent saves I've had on FM24. Mordrick did brilliantly well as well, to be fair. Um, so did Carboni, so did Fratessi when he did play, and played three times and scored two goals and one assist. Um, he's asking to leave because he wants to disagree to playing time. I would not be against signing him. Um, Barella got over seven. So did Guerra, so did Isaacson, so did Chiesa. If we go to Dynamics, ooh, I've got some people unhappy. Um, DeMarco to be expected because we're playing a break in front of him. So yeah, uh, he could be put on the transfer list. Uh, Tran wants to leave because he's a C- he, C- he thinks he's, a f- he's achieved everything at the club, but I can happily sell him. Gusto wants to leave to get better, t- better playing time, I'm happy to sell him. Vitesse wants to leave because of um, wants to get play more to get international set up. I'm happy to get him go automatically. He's also want thinks he's achieved everything at the club, so you can definitely go. But yeah, that is the end of all this episode. So we have had what this is our seventh season. We are on a third club. Celta Vigo was a bit of a miss, I would say, but somehow we managed to get the Antwerp Frankfurt job from that. We did amazingly well with Antwerp Frankfurt, getting two consecutive Champions League places when we were only expected to finish like 8th and winning the DFB Pokal and getting runners up in the second season, in the first season we won it. But what will happen in second season with Inter? I think it's too early to decide if our season here, uh, our time here has been successful or not. Hopefully next season we'll be winning things. Now I mean it will be successful. Anyway, I've been Matthew, also in some hacks. I'll see you all next time. Hex signing out. Goodbye. Oh, and before you leave, <laughs> check out my community page. Uh, I've got a poll going up about where you would, what videos you would like to see next year in FM25. Uh, whichever wins, if it's a majority, uh, like three votes and zero, zero on the others or something like that, I'll be focusing on that for, well, for FM25. So if you want to vote for that, you've got four choices. You've got either just rebuilds and getting away from the German. You've got German and rebuilds. You've got German rebuilds and these shorter series that come out every few weeks over the course of every few weeks. And then they go through another shorter series after that. And then another one, which is just shorter series and rebuilds. Basically, I want to focus on rebuilds, but hey, I'm letting you guys decide, so if you want to go check out the community pages and click all that, uh, vote for it, and by the time of FM25, or when FM25's base actual main data update comes out, if they have doing a beta, uh, that will be in final what will you'll have on my channel for FM25. So I want to make it more open and more people to vote and decide on the course of what happens in my series on YouTube 
and this is the best way to do that going on the community page because you get polls. Anyway, I'm Ben Matthew, also the Summer Hacks. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Thanks for sending out. Bye everybody.